Welcome to my Phil's Gang YouTube channel, The Unfolding Stock Market Crash. This is a bonus that I'm going to give on my normal Friday posting. And because of what's been going on, especially in the last 30 days, and the volatility in this market, to let you know exactly what's going on. One thing that we know about the fake business news network Okay. Uh, they they're they're not going to tell you the truth. Their job is to make sure that you always feel good, so that you go out and spend. They got to get you to feel good. That's why after the crash of two thousand eight, they made a decision not to have a recession. First time in what hundred years. Every time you have a an economy collapsing, you always put them in a recession so you get rid of all the bad players. So you get rid of the weak banks, especially the weak banks, and just stay with the good banks. But you get rid of the weak corporations, stay with the strong ones. So you take all their assets away from them, let them go away, and you build a stronger community. And that's how you grow a great economy. Well, when we had the 2008 crash, unfortunately, Baby Bush was involved. And as you know, his family, very wealthy, and they get their wealth from two places, oil and banking. His grandfather, the Bush family grandfather, or great-grandfather, heavy on Wall Street. So when the banks collapsed in 2008 because of the housing market, they did not want to collapse the banks. That's the last thing they wanted to do. So let me explain something to you where we are. So let's put that aside for now. So let's just put that over there, that they didn't want to collapse the banks. That's the real bad thing that happened. But also, to get the truth, what is really going on? Is the market going to crash? Is it a good economy? What's really going on? There's only one place you can find the truth, in the bond market. Now, I don't know if you recall, but if you go back to Larry Kudlow, when he had his show, remember he, some years ago he started out a show with himself and with uh, Kramer. Then they split apart. Then he had his show. And he finally got fired. They had to cancel the show because he kept telling people, do not pay attention to the bond market. Forget the bond market. When we had the housing crash, the dot-com crash coming, he denied it. He denied it. Even though the bond market told us a crash was coming. When the housing crash was coming, and he was denying it right up to the end, and he kept saying, don't look at the bond market. Forget the bond market. And the bond market was screaming we we're going to have a crash. In fact, we, the crash started with housing, and he came out and said, Oh, don't worry. That's just a couple houses. That's just a couple houses. So my point is, you can't trust anything that these people tell you on these business network shows. Just like we can't trust our Congress. Can you trust Congress? Can you trust Washington? Can you trust the newspapers, what they tell you? No. You can't trust these people. They're not there to help you. So the bond market sent us another message, just like it did right before the dot-com crash. They were correct. Sent us, they sent us a message in the last 30 days, just like they did before the housing crash, going all the way to 1987. The bond market sent us a message that was going to crash. Matter of fact, we started to short the market. My father, in, in, in uh, January of, of 1987, market crashed in October. So let's talk about yields. Now, 10-year Treasury yield, everybody follows. Now, all yields are. You know what they are. You just, if you buy, you, you, you want to take money, and people love buying bonds because they feel safe because they're lending money to the government. So most of them, people want to lend money over 10 years because they get a higher rate. 
So the, the luster years, if you go to, you know, a five, uh, you go to uh, from ten years to five years, you get less of a rate. You go down to two years, you get less of a rate. You go to three months, you get less of a rate. Well, when all of a sudden, pros in this business, what we look at constantly every day is the two year is the two year yield going up faster than the ten year. Now when that starts happening, it tells you something's out there that's going to take this market down. They're very concerned. When everybody says, I'm not going to loan the government anymore 10 years, I'm just going to loan it two years, or worse, three months. Now, in 2000, and if you go back and take a look at, and this will bring us up to date, if you go back and look here on the chart, when the market crashed in 2008, the bond yields... Just like what we're seeing now, you're seeing in the last 30 days, our bond yields on the short end, the two-year, in 30 days, went from 41 basis points to 71 basis points, up 73%. While the 10-year only went up 5%. Wow, that's a bad message. We got the message right before the crash here. Same thing with the dot-com, same thing. And what they, so what happened is they decided, as I said, going back to baby Bush, he was not going to take the banks down. He decided, let's prop up the banks and we'll prop everything up. And that's when they went out and they started to print $130, $120 billion every month to take that money. And here's the first one they did. $1 trillion worth of it. They printed money. And they went and bought 10-year treasuries to drop interest rates down to zero so they could lend to the bad corporations that were going broke and the banks that were going broke that they should have that they should have let the Bush should have let go of bankrupt and to our government. And so they put in one trillion dollars and the market rallied. Well, that was November 2008. Market went up 80 percent because we drove interest rates down to zero. And what was leading the market was the big tech stocks. Because remember, technology, after the dot-com crash, remember, technology came into its own. And everybody's, I mean, everybody knew when they made that decision, Bush and the boys on Wall Street and, and the Congress, they knew, look, if, all we, if we keep interest rates down, if we print $120 billion a month, buy 10-year treasuries to drop the yields down to zero, then that means the stocks that will do best will be the big tech stocks. And that was perfect because the, it's like the sun, the moon, everything lined up together because tech was coming into its time. So they got everybody buying tech stocks. Everybody bought tech stocks because yields were down. So the market started to rally. Austin started to crash in 2010, and they did the same thing. They bought more bonds. They, they printed more money, $120 billion, went in, bought bonds, and they, and they and again, $650 billion, okay, to get interest rates back down to zero, and the market rallied again. And then here, same thing, Operation Twist. The market was going to crash again. So each time the market was ready to crash, they went in, printed more money, get interest rates to drop, to push the market up, and what pushed the market up was the bond. It was the was, was the big tech. So let's fast forward where we are today. So today, we're at a point now that the yields on the two-year are going up so fast, and against the ten-year, that. They're very worried. The investors are very worried about this tapering that Powell's going to make a decision on December 15th because they tried to taper in 2017, did the same thing. 
at December 17th, remember, 2017, they had on their balance sheet $4.5 trillion. Well, what's that mean? Well, if you go back from 2008, right here, to 2017, up in here, how they go in and they keep buying from the bad banks assets so they got cash to prop them up. They go buy the corporations, give them cash, and, and keep the interest rates at zero to prop them up. And they go and prop up the government because the government, remember, has a negative net worth. And, and so they go and, and they buy treasuries from them to keep them alive and give them money. So as they've been doing this all the way along, we've now reached the point that inflation has gone up so fast, so fast, okay, that the inflation has gone up so fast that people just can't, they can't live with it anymore. So at least if you went back to 2000, if you go back to 2008, remember, they said before the market crashed, well, I can either pay my car payment, I mean, can either pay my house payment or my credit card. I can't pay both. We're at a point now, and this is why they're afraid. That's why we're seeing the bond yields accelerate, the short bond yield accelerate, because they're saying, you know what? I think that the, the, this time they're going to let the market, they're going to pop the market, they're going to pop this bubble. Because remember, these are the same people who created the dot-com bubble, created the housing bubble, and created this QE bubble. But they're the same ones not only create the dot-com bubble, and they determine when they want to bust it, and they created the dot-com a housing bubble, and they decided when they're going to pop it. They created the QE bubble, and they decided we're going to pop it. We find that we, we can identify or get pretty close to when they're going to do that by seeing and identifying the inversion of the yields from where the two-year, the, the shorter year, two-year yield, okay, is going up faster than the 10-year. That's telling us they may pop this market. Something's wrong. Now, why would they pop it just like they did with the dot-com in the housing con, what makes them decide to pop the mark, finally finish it off? Because they see inflation's going up so high, wages haven't caught up, and people are at a point, they're just, they can't go any further. They can't go any further. So they just make the decision, let's just pop the bubble, let the market crash. The very wealthy makes a lot of money in the way down shorting it, and then they start a new bubble. That's why they're called the bubble masters. Now, in the last 30 days, what we've seen has been unbelievable. And that message we're getting is they think they're going to this time just pop the bubble because they can't keep expanding it because the people can only put up with so much. I mean, with gasoline, where it's up 49%. Where are they going to bring it up to 59 60%? Beefs up 2025. What are they going to bring up? 40%? Remember, our workforce, 72% of our country's workforce, 160 million people, they make a combined income, husband and wife, about 60, 65 grand. So they're, they're struggling. So Powell's going to have to make that decision. We'll know on the 15th if he's going to pop the bubble or not. According to what we're seeing right now with these yields going up, it's saying, yes, very favorable. It looks like that's what he's going to do. So we'll know on the 15th. So the bottom line is this, that when you're investing in stocks, the most important thing you do is turn off the TV and just watch the yields. The y yields tell you everything you need to know. Everything you need to know. And what you look for in those yields is the inversion. That tells you you better start taking money back off the market and get ready and get and learn how to sell short because you're going to have a lot of fun if the market corrects. So that's where we stand right now, and we'll just have to wait and see until the 15th. And for my members, we could care less, because we make money whether the market's up or whether the market's down. It doesn't matter to us, okay? And if you're not a member, why don't you join our gang? 
Try it for 10 days. It's free. And please remember, hit subscribe, like, and share. I'd really appreciate it. And listen to my radio show on my YouTube channel. Please do that. Always go to my YouTube channel listen to my radio show. So I hope you understand better what's going on right now and why there's so much volatility in the market. It's really not volatile if you know what's going on. It's just the same thing they do all the time. Our owners. Okay, see you on the charts.